Today, I build a gate. Welcome in, and if you've been here before, you might notice that I use a combination of hand tools and power tools. And maybe you're wondering why. Why don't I just stick with power tools? Aren't they faster and more efficient? Um, or why don't I stick with more traditional tools and do everything that way? And I'll tell you the reason why not. It's because I have to use what I have. Um, I have a combination of power tools and hand tools and they both get the job done for me um, they both work just fine usually usually I don't have any problems with them occasionally you know power tools aren't all they're cracked up to be and they break down they clog up and cause me problems in reality for the most part power tools do make things easier and faster for me and that's really why they're there you know in the olden days you'd have apprentices you would be um the shop master would be delegating tasks to get stuff done that are more mundane like hand planing everything to thickness or hand cutting eight boards to the exact same length like i'm doing here but instead i can use my miter saw and a stop block and accomplish the same thing much faster and at this point, you're probably wondering what my point of all of this is. And I'm getting there. Uh, my point is, we all have a certain level of skills and a certain level of tools. And we're all growing those skills and those tools. But the only way to do that is to get out in the shop and build. Regardless of what you build with or even what you build, it doesn't matter. Just get out there, get in the shop, get dusty, use the tools that you have, um, use the tools that you like to use, and put projects together and that's what this is all about that's woodworking is build projects and have fun honestly that's what I'm doing I'm having fun with this build and speaking of building what I'm making here is a dog gate this is for a friend who's also a client and he commissioned me to build him a gate because his old one uh, wasn't doing it anymore it got uh, plowed over and I'm trying to counteract that by using some traditional joinery that's going to be nice and sturdy and strong so no wayward dog takes this thing out in the future. So what you're seeing me do is lay out. I need to cut out a square of material so the outside part is going to be the full through bridal joint and then the inside is going to go within the one inch groove that I made in my top and bottom rail. So this will really make this a very strong joint. Um, it's got a lot of surface area for glue and with that big inside shoulder haunch it's going to give a lot of rigidity to it as well. Now this is by far my favorite part of the video because I'm going to do something that's atypical for a woodworker. I am not going to overcomplicate it. I need a wooden push block because I didn't want to blow up my little plastic one there. So I'm going to draw a couple of marks on a board. I'm going to make a line and cut it out. And that is it. This is the simplest push block that you'll probably ever see and it works great. You know, sometimes us woodworkers, we make things more complicated than they need to be. We buy fancy stuff, and it's just unnecessary. Use what you got, and, uh, you know, make a tool when you need one. And while we're talking about safety, I want to tell you the importance of always letting your miter saw blade just come to a complete stop before lifting up, especially when using a stop block. See how those jump? That can cause a problem real fast. So I was doing a little dry fit just to make sure everything was going to work nicely, and it's not. Um, so I'll zoom you in here so you can see what my, my issue is. 
You see how that bridle joint doesn't come all the way through? I meant it to, so I could trim it off at the end. It also sticks a little bit out on the other side there on the left, and uh, no big deal. I'll just trim it with the track saw later, but I wanted to show you my little mistake there. In case it's not apparent, I um, don't want to sand these entire blocks because they're not going to fit tightly then. So I just installed them where they're going to be and I just sand the top portion um, to make sure that I don't accidentally take off too much material and then they're going to fall out later. And I'm not going to show you much sanding, but always use a sanding pad. I just use a old yoga mat and that helps to um, Keep yourself from denting the backside as it rattles around on your worktop surface. Since I'm all about safety today, remember, always let your rags dry like this, otherwise they can cause a fire. They will spontaneously combust on you if you bundle them up and shove them in your trash can. So please be safe out there. Bringing it back to the hand tool conversation earlier, you know, one of the best benefits and the biggest reasons why I use hand tools is because of the control and ability to finesse and fine tune that you just can't get with the power tool. So here, a little hand plane, and I pulled that glue mark out nice and easily without accidentally digging in or sanding too much, and it turned out, uh, I think, really nice. show you a little technique when cutting a board with a miter saw that has a big cup or a bow to it. You cut incrementally just a little bit at a time and it's going to help relieve the stress in that board and um, not bind the blade on you or cause any kickback. And then since I did not want to have to hand plane this thing, um, I it had all that cup and bowing and issues with it so I'm going to use a jointer sled in my planer and something that I don't see often enough on YouTube is the way you're actually supposed to use these. You're supposed to put the fence forward like you see there and let the planer push the board against the fence and pull the sled through the planer. It works wonderfully. You don't need to put hot glue. You don't need to do anything. You just shove your shivs under there to keep everything nice and stable and then send it on through. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, I'm assuming I've done something right, and uh, I really appreciate you watching, first of all. And second of all, I'd really appreciate it if you could tell me that by subscribing, by liking, by leaving me a comment down below. And um, it will certainly help me as I continue to build content and make more of these videos.
So here we're on the day of the install and I messed up. The whole gate was about a sixteenth of an inch too long. So I'm going to take off a quarter inch on the back of the part that mounts on the wall that the gate butts up against and that should solve that problem. And then the gate was just slightly too tall. So I'm going to trim a little bit off the bottom to accommodate that. And now on for the big reveal.